Hey guys, yesterday I had posted on my Instagram stories the, a question box. And in this question box, you were able to ask me anything and everything that you wanted in regards to alopecia, hair loss, diet, lifestyle, etc. And so today I wanted to touch base with you and answer your questions. So let's go uh, to the questions and let's start from there. Let me just go ahead and pull them up. Let's see here. So a lot of the questions that I've been getting in the beginning were about diet. And so in particular, I have a couple questions here. One person wrote in and said, hey, I've been on this diet for four months with no progress. Now, granted, there are many ways to do different types of diets. And she did specify what type of diet. But again, it's like you can be vegan and you can be eating Oreos all day and still be vegan. So there are different types of diets and the way you do it is very different to perhaps the way I would encourage you to do it. So that's one thing. Second of all, what I want you to understand is that healing alopecia is much more than just diet. So diet is maybe 40 to 50% of healing alopecia. And I say this because it's much more than diet. You have to add in the lifestyle. You have to add in other factors. Healing alopecia is like putting a puzzle together. It's like putting a recipe together. There's much more than just the main course or the main uh, item for that recipe. And there are multiple ingredients and factors in terms of healing alopecia. And so it's not one size fits all. And it's definitely not just diet alone. This is why, um, you are probably feeling frustrated. This is probably why you're feeling um, maybe disappointed because you think that maybe doing this diet or that diet or following a certain diet of any sort will better your chances and your odds. And I'll tell you that, yes, diet is important and yes, it is critical, but at the same time, it's not everything, right? It's not everything. It's just one piece of many pieces to the whole puzzle. And the next question I got was, do you need to have a strict diet after you start seeing hair growth? So once you're on, let's say for example, my program with my diet that I encourage you to do, once you start seeing hair growth, you need to kind of continue on this same path of, of this diet. So for example, if you had a cold or a cough or the flu, or even if you got, let's say, food poisoning, you would probably want to be extra careful, even though maybe the vomiting and the diarrhea had already stopped, you would probably want to be very cautious with the foods that you're taking in, right? So that you don't relapse, so that you don't get sick again, so that you don't vomit or, or have any upset stomach. So in the same vein, once you start healing and start to see the hair growth, you want to kind of continue on the same diet and, and continue. Now, granted, in my program, I teach you how to cheat, how to enjoy life, how to um, you know, enjoy food, and how to continue on in a healthier manner so that you don't feel deprived. And in the same vein, when you are, let's say, traveling or when you do want pizza or anything else that you're craving, yes, go ahead and have it. And I teach you how to do that. And so me, myself, yes, I, I continue to have a clean diet, but at the same time, I do cheat and I do eat what I like to eat whenever I want. And it's, you know, it's a very conscious decision. And I do things um, in a different manner than what I have done in the past. But at the same time, it's also in a healthier manner. And so, yes, you can have your cake and eat it too. Definitely you can. And so it's not like you have to live deprived the rest of your life. That's, that's not the aim for this or the goal. The goal is to heal, but you also need to respect the time and space that your body needs to heal. So for example, going back to that analogy of having food poisoning, let's say you had food poisoning for five, five to seven days and you were vomiting and feeling sick and upset and weak and you know, uh, discomfort in your, in your stomach and digestion system and all these things. You wouldn't go back to eating hamburgers or french fries or lasagna or anything heavy, right? You would stick to maybe crackers and toast and soups and broths and these types of things. And so in the same vein, you need to respect that, that time that your body needs to heal. And so that's what I would say that once you, you're kind of like more than halfway there, you can start to kind of let go of the reins a little bit. But in the beginning, you need to like really 
foment and encourage that growth. And you need to keep going because obviously something's working. So if something's working, you need to keep going. You can't just go back to your old ways and to your old habits because then you're going to regress and you're going to go backwards into, into all the progress that you've done. So that would be my take on that. Um, another question in regards to diet was, can you eat peanuts with alopecia? So peanuts are a legume, it's not a nut. And in terms of eating peanuts, you know, yes, you can eat peanuts, but at the same time, you need to make sure that you're not allergic to them. And you wanna make sure that, um, you know, that there's no negative side effects to them. So eating peanuts, for example, is not a cause for alopecia. Um, but it could be unhealthy for you, right? If, if, for example, I'm allergic to peanuts and I didn't actually realize this until I was 27 and at 27, then it just kind of all clicked together. Um, I'll, I'll save you the story. It's pretty long, but I finally got to the root cause of my acne and of all my bad skin issues. And as you can see, my skin has cleared up since then, but you know, peanuts was a culprit and it was one of those unknown things. And so I, I was never anaphylactic, but I did have a, definitely a rash and a, and a whole host of cystic acne to go along with it. And so, you know, you just want to make sure that it's, uh, that it's good with your body and your body accepts it. But I mean, eating peanuts when you have alopecia, um, shouldn't really, uh, determine whether or not your hair grows or not. Peanuts, again, just in, you just want to make sure that you don't have an allergic reaction. That's really the main thing. Um, let's see. Next question. Did I ever wear a wig and, how, and was I ever close to shaving my head? So no, I was never close to shaving my head. That was really not, that was not something that had crossed my mind and wearing a wig was never something that I had crossed my mind first. First of all, wigs are expensive. And I mean, if you know me, I, I like good quality things, you know, whether that's, you know, furniture, a toothbrush, toothpaste, whatever it is, I like good quality things. And so with wigs, good quality wigs are expensive. And it's not something that I, again, that I had thought of. I was really focused on healing and really focused on getting my own hair back because I love my hair. You know, as you can see, it's been more than five years and I love my hair and there's nothing like having your own. And that's something that I was fighting for. It's something that I worked tirelessly for and put in so much time, sweat, tears, and effort into that this is why Alopecia Angel came about. Because out of through my own suffering, I knew that there were millions of others out there suffering through the same thing. Whether you're the parent with the child who has alopecia or whether you're the female or the male who has lived with it for their life or who just kind of got it out of nowhere in adulthood or maybe in their childhood or maybe in their teenage years. And there's another route because as I was reliving and rethinking about my alopecia journey this today, I was seeing how I was seeing how so many doctors and dermatologists and over-the-counter uh, over pharmacists were giving me a bunch of items, a bunch of things to try. And it was trial and error for them too, because they had no clue about alopecia. They only know what the textbook tells them. And they only know, you know, and they have certain toolkits, so certain prescriptions that they can offer you, but there's no guarantee with that with any of those prescriptions. And lo and behold, my alopecia got worse. Lo and behold, the situation got worse emotionally, mentally, physically, uh, with the hair loss, with the shedding, everything got worse every time I tried something new. And so then I just, you know, I discarded it all and I, I was like, forget it. I need to start from scratch. I need to start from the bottom up. And that's how Diet and Lifestyle came about. Then it's the one thing that most people don't look at. It's the, it's the one thing that most people revert to as like the worst last case scenario or last option or last opportunity, when in reality it should be the first, it should be the first thing that we look at. But me, myself, I was in that same boat. I was looking at conventional uh, medicine. I was looking at a bunch of other options before looking at diet and lifestyle. But thankfully it didn't take me that long to realize that diet and lifestyle was the only way. And so again, I never wore a wig 
it never crossed my mind. And shaving my head was never something that I considered during my time with alopecia. However, I did consider shaving my head at one point when I lived in Miami because it was just so hot during the summer that, again, so much hair, you just, you kind of wanted to shave it off at some point, but not because of alopecia, but because of just my own, uh, yeah, just because of my own thing with, with the heat. So the next question, does alopecia affect men and women differently? And is the root cause different? So this is a two-part question. So let me first address the how it affects men and women. So yes, it affects men and women differently. A, because the prescriptions uh, that you would receive at the doctor's office can be different. Um, and they also have different side effects and, and risks, right? Uh, a lot, there's, there's a couple, a handful of prescriptions for men out there that causes impotence and erectile dysfunction. And so that's like one avenue that, or hurdle, I should say, that, that men would have to really consider and, and figure out if, if that's really worth it for them, for their hair. And for women, you know, there are other hosts of, of, of side effects and risks. I have a free PDF actually online on my website, alopeciaangel.com, that you can download for free. And it tells you all the risks and side effects of, um, of the typical alopecia medications that are out there or that are offered by your doctors and dermatologists. And there's also another PDF out there on my website in regards to what current prescriptions cause hair loss. So that's twofold, right? Um, so you could be taking, let's say, birth control, and that could be triggering your hair loss. So you know there, there are various factors in terms of men and women. Now, it does affect men and women differently on an emotional level, on a societal level, um, on a physical level as well. You know, with men, they, they probably get it in their beard or maybe on their head. With women, you probably see it first on the head. And then it can progress into alopecia uh, totalis or universalis and, can, and it can go quickly. It could also take months and years, but it can also go quickly uh, as I've seen through my clients. And so the root cause to both men and women can be similar or it can be different. So what I'd like to say is that diet and lifestyle is what you need to look at and is what you need to use in, in order to heal. That's your starting point. If you don't have a strong foundation, you can't build up from there. So here's another question. Another question asked me, does PRP work? PRP is platelet rich plasma. Does it work? And through my experience and through what I've seen through my clients, there's a lot of treatments out there that do not work. And I'll tell you why. And it's again, because the foundation is not strong. So it's almost like trying to build a house when the foundation or the flooring is sand, or let's say it's swamp, or let's say it's mud. You know, the, the house is going to not be strong and sturdy. And so it's the same thing with your health. You can't build upon something if the foundation isn't right. And so the PRP, acupuncture, um, traditional Chinese medicine and a bunch of other things do not work unless the diet and lifestyle is correct. And that's just plain and simple. And this is why conventional medicine does not work because you need diet and lifestyle. And again, this is something that doctors aren't taught. Dermatologists don't teach. They don't, they don't know. They just simply, they don't know because they're not taught that in medical school. And again, it took me three years to figure this out and to use trial and error on myself. And I don't know if you know the story, but my full story is online um, at alopeciaangel.com. But at the same time, I really did this because of my fertility. I wanted to protect my fertility. I wanted to protect my future, my future health, not just my hair health now, today, and my you know health inside and out, but I also wanted to protect that uh, my fertility because it's so sacred to me because I want the option to have children and not just children, but healthy children. And this is kind of the driving force because I believe that our bodies are made to rejuvenate and regenerate themselves. They're made to heal. We just need to learn and understand how to support it, which again, no one's teaching us. Parents, doctors, governments, schools, teachers, etc. They don't know. And so you don't blame them, but you do need to find out the people who do know. 
And this is why Alopecia Angel was created because I do want to put out that information out there that there is a better way to heal alopecia. There is a better way to reverse this and not have to fear it of coming back. So for me personally, it's been more than five years. And as you can see, I've got tons of hair and it's not going anywhere. And, you know, I get a lot of questions in regards to age, you know, is age a factor? Yes and no, but not really. Um, and I say this cause I'm in my forties is, you know, race a factor? No, it's not a factor. Race, ethnicity is not a factor. Just like you're uh, one color or another, or if you're run one race or another, if you come from one country or another, alopecia, you know, hits everybody the same. And it's, again, it's all about diet and lifestyle. And the same with children. What's the difference between a child and an adult? Again, it's diet and lifestyle. And many times, unfortunately, children, you know, they don't have a choice. They eat and drink what their parents give them. And so they are most vulnerable to whatever their parents are giving them. And potentially it's not sitting well with them. And clearly it's, it's creating alopecia. It's creating a disease, which again, thankfully we can reverse it. We can put it to sleep, but you have to learn the ins and outs of diet and lifestyle. And diet and lifestyle is very vague. It's very, you know, high level. But when you start getting to the root and to the nitty gritty, you start to see all these other subcategories. And many times you like to think, oh, lifestyle, it must be just meditation, yoga, and um, I don't know, stress-free life. But it's so much more than that, so much more. What my clients like to say is that they have numerous aha moments, they have eye-opening moments where they didn't realize that all these other pieces, all these other ingredients per se, all contribute to an autoimmune disease or to alopecia. And so this is part of the problem. It's like when you don't know, you don't know how to proceed. But when you do know and you have a guide and you have you know, an expert leading you, then you're able to proceed in the right manner and in the right way. And also in a shortest route possible. So you could take the long route, as many have, as, as you have all been taking up until now, you can continue to take the long route and you know, and piecemeal here and there, and you know, see doctors here and there, and try this and try that. But I can guarantee you, without diet and lifestyle, without that strong foundation, nothing can improve. Nothing can be better. Nothing will grow, and nothing will will be healed. Because that's what you want. You want to heal from the inside out. You want to get to the root cause. You want to be done with it. And I know that you want your hair. You want your health. And I know you also want to live in a fearless way you know you don't want to have to fear that is it going to come back am i going to go swimming and then all of a sudden my hair is going to start shedding again or you know am i going to um you know see more hair clumps in the shower you want to avoid all that but you can with control of your diet and lifestyle and i teach you how to do that in my program so another question that came up was how long does it take um, before the shedding stops. So on average, when I have clients who do either coaching or who do my program, the signature program, which is two months, eight weeks long, shedding stops normally in less than four weeks. On average, two to three weeks. So in two to three weeks, if you have massive, massive shedding right now, two to three weeks, that's nothing. That's nothing. It can be done. Your shedding stops. And it stops, and then what happens? Your body is healing and it's taking its time to heal, but at the same time, we're encouraging it with all the different um, techniques that we're using and strategies. And then from there, you start to see hair growth. And this is why I have such a high percentage of people who are able to see hair growth in less than two months, because you get to it, you fast track your results quickly, naturally, with diet and lifestyle, just by supporting your body. So it's, it's not a gimmick, it's just how much are you able to do in terms of change in effort and you know feeding your body the right things you know mentally physically spiritually emotionally so that you can thrive so that you can heal so another question that i got is can you eat peanuts and alopecia i don't know if i just if i just spoke about this but you can eat al uh, you can eat peanuts during alopecia or you know in your life as long as you don't have an allergy so just double check and make sure you don't have an allergy. Make sure that it sits well with you. Um, peanuts are a legume. And again, you know, it's not something necessarily that I promote and encourage 
I don't think necessarily it's a health food. So, you know, if you want peanuts, you can have it. Again, I don't encourage it or promote it, but at the same time, you just want to make sure that it's not necessarily having an allergic reaction. And I only say this because I had cystic acne and really bad um, acne uh, all over actually uh, for essentially my whole life until I was 27, until I figured out I had a peanut allergy. Cause I, I do like peanuts and I do like peanut butter and I do love peanut butter cookies, but they're not healthy for me. So I don't, I don't go there. Let's see, is it possible to get your hair back with androgenetic alopecia? Androgenetic alopecia is female pattern baldness, um, also known as male pattern baldness. And from what I see, with my clients, they are able to see hair growth with androgenetic alopecia. So regardless of many types of the alopecia that you might have, you are able to heal that. Now granted, for some it might take longer than for others. For somebody with areata versus androgenetic versus traction versus universalis, you know, each one has their own different time frame, And it's hard to say uh, you know, who's going to heal first or who's going to heal quickest. But really what I see is it's almost like a race, right? Like a marathon race. Who's going to get to the finish line first? Well, it's the person who runs the fastest, right? That's the one who, <laughs> who, who gets to the finish line first is the one who runs the fastest. So in this term, in this situation, let's say with alopecia, the one who gets to the finish line is the one who implements as much as possible on a consistent basis. And this is why the program is so necessary because it allows you to see step-by-step step without any confusion, without missing any steps of what it is you need to do, what it is you need to look at. Even if you, th if you think that it doesn't apply to you, I would say look into it because the information is there for a reason. The information is there because it could be part of that recipe. And again, everyone's recipe looks a little different. This is why not one size fits all. This is why conventional medicine doesn't work. This is why acupuncture, PRP, none of these things or gimmicks work because again, the diet and lifestyle is not there. But again, the person to find the healing the fastest, the one who is able to get to the finish line and cross it successfully is the one who is consistent with implementing all the things, strategies and techniques that I've laid out in the program. For you and so yes I believe hair growth is possible with traction alopecia with androgenetic alopecia with alopecia universalis with totalis with areata and many others but again the effort needs to be there and the implementation needs to be there so I can educate you I can guide you but at the end of the day you need to do the work so you know it's you can't just sit and do nothing, you have to really implement it. And so the more you implement, the more you'll start to see how things change and how things are able to produce and get better. Let's see, any other questions? Let's see here. I answered that, answered that. Perfect, well, I think I've answered a lot of questions today. We will do this again next week. If you have more questions, I'd love to hear from you and I'd love to see what you have for me. I'll go ahead and do the answer box or the question box on Instagram once again. So this way you can see all the uh, questions and I can do another video and, sh and then just share my expertise and share my knowledge with you because I think that's half the battle. A lot of times there's a lot of misnomers and a little, there's a lot of myths out there and there's a lot of bad information in regards to alopecia. So. I understand that Google is the first thing that everyone turns to when you start researching, when you start uh, to try to figure out, you know, what's going on and you try to see what your options are. And, you know, the internet is a double-edged sword. There's a lot of good information. There's a lot of bad information. And so depending on the route you take, it could take you the long way. It could take you the short way. And it can also make you feel stuck. And this is where I think a lot of my clients are at. They're, they're stuck. They've been dealing with this for many months and years and decades even, and they just want to get faster results. They want to go to somebody who's been there, done that, and who's been able to overcome this hurdle and not only overcome it, but then thrive and also help others do the same. Because 
again, I know exactly how you're feeling. I know I've been in your shoes. Um, I can smile now. I can see the rainbow. I can see the, the sun shining on me. And I want the sun to shine on you. I want you to see the rainbows and hear the unicorns, uh, you know, sing and everything else because I believe it's possible. Now, again, it's not overnight. It does take a little time, but it's so much easier and so much quicker once you have the guide, once you have the manual, once you have the expert advice, when you have someone who knows exactly what to do and can show you the way. So I hope this has been great for you. It's been wonderful for me. I look forward to hearing and uh, seeing more of your questions next week on Instagram. And again, if you have any questions, just uh, contact me via alopeciaangel.com. I look forward to speaking to you then. Take care.